right, all set for another adventure. Nineteenth of September and have made it to Miss and Car. Not sure where I'm going to trap at, at the moment. Just waiting to see on how the wind lies, so to speak. Should be fine here, but I'm tempted to go the other side of the gates. Maybe even in the car park. Not trapped actually in the car park. Not since the very first time I trapped here last year. So, I'll have a wander and find out where I'm going to trap. Well, before I start and set up, someone asked me if I could show a bit more about the setup and the logistics of the trapping process. But you've seen me load everything up in the car, and when I say everything, there's very little equipment you need. The standard thing that everybody needs moth trapping is a light a light like this little beauty here the bulb is 125 watt mv or mercury vapor bulb absolutely brilliant for attracting large numbers of moths you can use an actinic bulb which attracts good numbers of moths as well but nothing really has the power of mercury vapor in attracting moths the bulb itself is mounted in a porcelain lamp holder, which in itself, as you can see, sits on the top of said box. This box has been adapted over the years and made smaller. I used to have one of those traps that sort of collected the moths and that you have to empty at the end of the trapping session. I soon got fed up with that and so scaled it down. And we have this inside this box is another important component, an electrical one, and it's the choke or the ballast. You need that to power one of these, especially at startups when you really need it, because the amount of power to this bulb needs to be governed. And then once that has warmed up, everything is fine. So it's an MV bulb. The glass top here is just the glass part of a cafetiere a large one and that's secured down with screws these screws with rubber washers attached so the glass doesn't break that sits on top of the box inside the box is the choke and that's completely waterproofed and then the cable is just standard cable at home you don't have to worry about the power or so that ball but if you're trapping out somewhere like this, you do. So you need something like this. This is my new generator. I say new, I've had it about a year now. And it's a Sensi. Fabulous thing. Really impressed with it. It's full of fuel. So at this angle, lifting it up, it seems heavy. But this is nothing in weight compared to my old one which is one of the metal framed ones now they weigh an absolute ton these are absolutely fabulous so armed with your generator and your light and your bulb and your choke you're all set to go moth trapping the only other requirement of course is some kind of white sheet to 
either stand the trap on or drape over a fence and the moths are attracted to that. Time to get set up. Quite a magical sound that. It's like being right in the middle of the Corvid roost here. Well, we're off and running to an evening chorus of corvids of assorted sizes, shapes and varieties. We've not long since started to come in and are just settling down now. Lots of chatter at the end of the day. And let's hope for a few moths this evening. There's occasionally there's a little bit of a breeze here, but at the moment, as you can probably see, it's as still as anything. And I'm looking forward to the first few moths that have come in. It'd be nice to get something that I've not had before, but more moths than last night at Land Wood is the first objective. And conditions are pretty much exactly the same. Well, first moth and moth in a pot. It won't settle horizontally, so I'm afraid it'll be photograph time, but this is an oak nictiline, fairly widespread in Nottinghamshire. It's probably increased a little bit, but nobody catches lots of these. They maybe catch one or two a year with regular trapping. It's a while since I caught one of these from what I can remember. And this is the very first moth that's in. And so a nice start, a nice county record, and very much like a tortrix if you're new to moth trapping you see one of these in and you think well that looks like a, a fairly large micro moth but it isn't it's actually a macro moth so a nice start with oak nictiline and hopefully you'll have seen a few photos because this is a very variable species a good start look at this Tawny owl call that I don't hear all that often. It's very much your horror movie owl call. And it's only in the trees at the back of where I'm trapping, those trees around the car park. You get some weird and wonderful sounds to accompany your moth trapping. One is the buzz of hornets. I've got three in at the moment. I'm just settling the third one down. Always have a couple of large catch cups if you're trapping in the autumn, especially in woodland. Always come in handy. A fabulous noise. As you can see, a very quiet sheet. Not a lot on there. A few crane flies and a few caddis flies, too. And a tawny owl still. Very pleasant, though. Nice temperature doesn't feel cold in any form very nice indeed and it's proved to be relatively breeze free here just the occasional bit of breeze but not the nagging breeze I thought would develop at least it hasn't at the moment I can hear it through the tops of the nearby trees but at sheet level it's fine as you can hear I'm hearing the full repertoire that this tawny owl has to offer, including the 
classic to it to woo. But 11 species so far in just over an hour and probably the best species of the night has just come in, the 11th species, and it's a dark spectacle. I'll probably not get a chance to film it, but I will put in photographs. And this is only the second time that I've taken this species. The first time was at home a couple of years ago. So this is a really nice moth to get. Just come straight in, straight down onto the sheet. So I'm pleased with this one. Two nice moths in, in just 11 species. And the highest of any species is square spot rustic at seven now. But there's a few more moths starting to come in. In fact, there's a cetaceous Hebrew character that's just come in as a spee. So not many moths, but at least a bit of quality. Well, I've got the opportunity now it's settled down to show you that dark spectacle. For a number of years, I've always tried to turn every spectacle that I saw into one of these. Failed miserably. But this is another one of the, those moths that you will know it when you see it. And they are actually quite different, although care has to be taken. The basic identification feature is the darkness of the ground colour to the wings. It appears almost black when it first comes in, but at the base of the wings there, it's straw coloured, and that tuft of hairs on the thorax is also straw coloured. That's a strong indicator that you've got a dark spectacle. And then where there's that hint of a cross line, and that cross line becomes a bit more sharp and distinguishable, it's edged in red. That's another identifying feature of dark spectacle. It's a very attractive moth, and it's an uncommon moth too. This is a moth that people rarely catch, to be honest. There are a few records in Nottinghamshire each year, but when you get this one, this is most definitely a goodie. So that's dark spectacle. A lovely moth to get. And a moth that I've not given much consideration to for turning up tonight. Well, we're an hour and a half just over into the session and a few more species have come in. And Blastobasis adostella, a particularly well-worn individual which looked as if it had been well, flown through a hedge backwards and forwards several times. But a nice micro that's in is a Cleris variegana, which is quite a variable a Cleris, but beautifully marked. It's a real cracking species. Just had white points in, so that's a, a nice moth to get. Had that here before, and lunar underwing, and that's it. But despite it being very quiet, it's a very enjoyable session, and it's one of those sessions which has that air of promise about it. Let's hope that promise comes to fruition. But it's very pleasant conditions. It's still 15 centigrade, so it's not dropped as much as it did at Land Wood last night. But the amount of moths is pretty much about the same. Well, over two hours gone, just coming up to quarter to ten. Very, very quiet. There's not even any of the typical autumn moths, none of the colourful sallows that have turned up. Very, very few moths. I don't suppose many of you have ever moth trapped while lying down, but tonight I can afford myself such luxury. The ground's dry, there's no problem with ticks, and it's quite pleasant. Very quiet though. Aren't we in between ranges of moths almost? 
Well, that's a hornet. Long time since the third one came in. So I've not done bad really. This is only the fourth. But I do wonder, because I've not had a hint of any of the colourful automoths, not a single sallow of any kind. It's quiet generally. I'm just wondering whether we're between species of which have been on the wing for the last month or so, species like copper underwing, because the one that's been in is incredibly tattered and worn. We're into the third hour now, so I'm certainly going to give it till half past ten because there appears to be a slight increase in the number of moths coming in now. Hopefully not an increase in the number of hornets. And I don't know what the three are doing in the pot that I've got them in because it's completely steamed up. Who knows what they're doing, but they're going to have a bit more company in a minute when this one's considered slowing down a little bit. Well, 22.30, three hours is up. And I must admit, there is nothing that makes me think it's worth carrying on. The number of moths here tonight is incredibly small and the few moths that are here, obviously they're all males, I don't want to take them out of the system so to speak. So I'm going to call it a night after three hours and I didn't think to be honest that I would be saying that. But there's always another night. <laughs>